Wow, welcome back and as scientist sana for keeping it is so cute. My name is Shiko Cosmas. If you've just joined us, Jachelewa Sana, it's your segment Ndania Hassel Yangu. And if you have just joined us, today we are talking about the most trouble you have ever put yourself into. Kama Ujatuma Bado, we are still waiting for them to send you a very big shout out if you leave your name and where you're watching us from and send them to 22162 or that number that is on your screen. Now, talk about today on the segment, Daniel Hasuliangu. We have this guy, Robert. He makes brand out of artists and also DJs. His biggest project is Weli Weli by Timmy Tidat. He's the one who branded it and goody goody. But before he got into this, he has, has a story to tell. Sema kuza ma DVD, kwa mjengo, kuza these people who sell fruits <laughs> on the streets, and so much. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Where do you start from? <laughs> Karibu Zara. I'm so glad. I'm so <laughs> glad. I thank you for I thank you why why two five four for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. to basically, just come and share my story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm so grateful and honored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow! I know this story is gonna inspire someone outside there, <laughs> especially because uh, I'm a DVD. Once I have my DVD, I'm a mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. What I can say, <coughs> but before uh, we go mm -hmm. we get there, maybe mm -hmm. you should start with now your profession right now oh, my profession as a brand right manager. Mm -hmm. Tell mm -hmm. us more about your job description. Okay, what I do, <laughs> what I do is I make, uh, just like you said, I make a brand out of an artist, out of a DJ, out of business. Mm -hmm. What I do is uh, I take you as raw as you are, then I package you nicely, mm -hmm. then I present you to you know to your audience or to your to your people. If you're a business person, I present you to your potential clients. You know, I, pro I you know, I just put you out there to your to your investors. Mm -hmm. That is what I do. I just do the hard work for you. You just come, you, I hook you up, and there you go. Where, why are people not able to package themselves that they need brand managers? What to ask? Because uh, number one, um, let me say it's hectic, mm -hmm. and number two, a lot of people don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, people, people, people copy other people. You know, you have to be unique. You have to have your own strategy. You have to be. You have to have a vision and a mission. If you miss those two things or if you you know or, or if you try to interchange them in an you know in another aspect to favor you or to copy another person it won't work mm -hmm. yeah why should i brand myself <laughs> we all need to be to be branded at one point because number one you need to brand yourself because you want to stand out mm -hmm. and number two just like i said vision where do you want to reach i mean where do you want to go if you want if, if you if, if you if you aim if you aim for for africa you know you'll be limited but if you aim for for the globe i mean you need more branding, you need more marketing, you need you need a whole package of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And apart from marketing and branding, actually what marketing and branding does is it, just to discover the treasure inside of you and to, to, to see the limitless opportunities around you and to go for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Akilam to uh, everyone. You see there's something, there's a seed of greatness in everyone. Uh -huh. And it's good when we when we discover and nurture it. Because when you discover and nurture it, it you know it will it will not only be be beneficial to us and those around us, but it will even affect the globe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you as Shiko can affect the world the way you are with your uniqueness, with your peculiarity. That is something that we all need to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyone deserves to brand themselves, exactly. not only artists. As yeah, you yeah. Do. Everyone needs to brand themselves. You know, in whatever they do, they need to stand out. They need to be the peculiar people that they can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you can be a presenter, but you know. How a very how outstanding, you brand? yeah. Brand <laughs> will be just be a normal presenter, but you can be a presenter, but a very very good presenter. You can be an outstanding presenter. You can be a presenter that down uh, down history lane after after you've gone, guys will remember you. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And when did you begin uh, branding? Um, I, I had this idea. Okay, I had this idea a while back, but I I began to to put it in action around. 2014, 2015, that is when I decided to, to collect my network and contacts and I began to, you know, to try and see if it can work, to, to try and, you know, to, it was trial and error for me from 2014. So from 2014 till now, I can say if, um, it's, it's worked, it's worked. How did you go about it? Did you go to school to study about branding and I just came automatically out uh, of it? Okay. When I, when I went to school, when I got an opportunity to go to school, we did business courses. So there was uh, marketing, there was management, there was accounting. And I kind of, I just kind of loved uh, marketing and management. And I think I even excelled better in marketing and management. So um, somewhere in between, I got a job. And I decided, no, do you know what? I'm not going back to school. 
let me try and apply the skills that I learned in business school and see if they can work for me. And that's what I've been doing. Plus, I do a lot of research. I school myself, by the way. I school myself e each now and then. I go, you know, to the internet. I buy books. I sit down with people who've done it, you know, people who are ahead of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I have mentors who I can go to and I can listen to them, you know, listen to them. And they can tell me, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. It's like a never-ending never progress. Wow. It's something you just continue learning and learning and learning. Okay. Yeah. If I have a computer, I <laughs> have to keep it up with it. <laughs> and how many artists have you branded so far? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I have a lot of, oh, hey, hey. they have, hey, hey. okay, there are so many, <laughs> but those guys know, uh, um, there's a time I've worked with Habida, there's a, there's a song, uh, there's a song she released in 2014, 2015, it was called, uh, it was called Lights Out, mm -hmm. I've worked with Timmy T. Dart, I've worked with Everlast, I've worked with Brown Mauzo, um, mm, currently right now I'm, I'm working with upcoming um, artists, mm -hmm. which are gonna be, you know, they're gonna be stars very soon. Yeah. And what's the secret behind you branding this artist? The secret, just like I said, the secret, um, the artist has to be disciplined. And the artist has to be, they must have a vision, you know, and they have to be like self-motivated. Apart from me coming and selling everything to you that the way I'm selling them, you, you also have to be self-motivated. You also have, you know, you, you, your drive must be stronger and you, you must see the same thing. You know, if I'm seeing you there, you don't have to see yourself here. Mm -hmm. You know, because at times I find people who think that uh, we do this for the money or we do this because, just like I said, I'm doing this because, you know, maybe I'm expecting to, to get money from it. But at the end of it all, I'm also protecting my image and my brand. Mm -hmm. You know, I want when I present you to, you know, to the public or when I present you where I'm presenting you, mm -hmm. I want you to speak for me. Yeah. yeah, I want the, you know, your brand to shout loud for me. Yeah. yeah. And how do you feel? Because I feel it like... Sisi wote tuko ndani ya giza pahali. Alafu mm -hmm. unakuja na sukuma mtu ana shine wona baki hapo. How do you feel about it? <laughs> okay. Cuz like wele wele we know it but you know the people behind it those people who branded it and uh, okay. <laughs> um let me say at first at first you feel like you know you should share you know you should share the glory with him yeah, you should share the cre I know. credit and everything. <laughs> uh -huh. But then you come and understand uh -huh. Uh, we all we, we all play different roles, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, yeah. We all play different roles. You know, there always be there always be those people. I don't know who are, who are just there are people who are just to be to to do to do that to be on set like that, and there are people who are just you know basically to to work behind the sets with no names with no nothing. But they are the guys who work hard. But then again, just like I said, um, with the time. With the time after you've you, you've worked on a brand mm -hmm. and you've polished them and they shine, you know, when you go and tell somebody someone about it or when the artist recommends someone to you, it's when you know, hey, okay, I'm really doing something. But it's human nature for us to want to shine always. As in serious, honestly speaking, yeah, don't you yeah, feel yeah. it? <laughs> okay, I felt it. You know, okay, like what? Okay, what? What am I going to say? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say. You see, if 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 I began working with an artist, it it, it, it begins to be more of a family thing. It begins to be more of uh, something that we are all all in. It's not something that I can take credit and say. Do you know what? It's my efforts and everything and everything. It's just something. It's like a, col a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we when we have this achievement, we can all you know we can all take credit for it. We can all be you know we can all say you know, it's better it's better we have this than than that. As much as I want to take the credit for so much, at least I've progressed. At least I've I've done something. You know this is my brainchild. This is these are my ideas. These are my strategies. Yeah. Talk about your biggest project so far mm -hmm. as a brand manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my biggest project, let me say, this year. This year I've had, a, I've had a couple of projects. I don't know which one to, to call my biggest project. But Goody Goody was good for us. Goody Goody really went far. It, it, really, it really even went, um, it went international. Uh, we got emails from outside. We, you know, it really went, it was good for us. Then we had this concert in April in Busia. And um, Eddie Kenzo, Eddie Kenzo was the main artist. Matonya was there. You know, and a lot of uh, artists came to support us, and I was the stage manager. That was also big for me. Then I also had this project where I went to Uganda to market an artist of mine, mm -hmm. which, according to me, that was big. And currently, I'm, I'm also doing Kameshika by Kemo and Stiga. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, a word mm -hmm. maybe to upcoming arti artists, mm -hmm. where they should brand themselves, because maybe sometimes people think, I have a song, it's a good song to mm -hmm. just hit, I don't need branding. Mm -hmm. What's your word to them? Let me say this. Let me say, you see, Kenya, 
the corporate world in Kenya has a lot of money to, to splash, you know, to, to, to support artists, to support foundations. But the problem is, just like I said, branding. You see, you, you, you're, expecting it, you're expecting to get a deal of 20 million. Why, why you don't look like 20 million? You know, you just look like someone who, I don't know, who just woke up on the wrong side of the bed, just dressed and they came for a meeting. You know, as an artist, you need, you need those steps. You need to brand yourself. You need to, to polish your art. You need to work on your art. You need to work on yourself so that you can, you know, you can bag some of these deals. At times, it's, 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 it's almost impossible to, to think of how a corporate can go and endorse an artist from, you know, from our neighboring countries yeah. while we have our own here. Then we shall be crying, you know, we shall be crying and lamenting and criticizing and complaining while it's us who are failing to do our part. If we do our part, I can guarantee you that um, there are corporates out there, there are companies out there that can work with so many, many artists and many talents in mm -hmm. this country. Wow. Yeah. And now this is the part that most people are waiting for. Mm -hmm. Like now you've said all that. Mm -hmm. It's a final thing. But mm -hmm. now we have not even got to the final thing. Mm -hmm. Now talk about your story briefly. <laughs> wow. How you used to sell or how you got yourself into this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was born in Kariobangi. Kariobangi at a place called Dafur. And um, I lived in Kariobangi for 14 years. Then we later went to... Uh, my dad died. So we later went to went to Kariobangi South. So I did my schooling, uh, my secondary schooling when I'm um, in Kariobangi South. Uh, that was in Our Lady of Fatima. Then after Our Lady of Fatima, two months before I cleared my KCSE, my mom got sacked. Okay, at that moment it didn't hit me. So me I went, I cleared my exams. Now after after a week or two, my mom calls me and tells me, Do you know what? This month you're the one who's paying rent. And I look at mom and I'm like, mom, you're not serious. At class? At that, okay, at that time I was, um, I, had, I had cleared my KCSE. Okay. Mm. That is in form four. Mm. I cleared my form four. That is two weeks after I would cleared my, my exams. And I think mom is joking. And I'm like, mom, you, you are working, you've been working for 20 years. Where is the money? And mom is like, do you know what? I got in a loan. Uh, I didn't pay my loans in time. The rates were crazy. I had to pay the loans. So they had to, you know, auction some of the property. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I understand. So I was like, I don't believe it, mom, I just need your ATM. Let me go and confirm in the bank the balance. Going to the bank, I discovered we had no money. So I had to do something, you know, as the first one of the family. So I began to do casual jobs. I began to do mean jobs, you know, for the family to pay the rent, to make sure people are eating, you know, to make sure that we can still manage that, you know, the life that we had. So that's the point you got into Mjengo? Yeah, that's the point I got into Mjengo. Later I became, um, I worked at a bakery. After that, another friend offered the, the fruit, uh, fruit vending business my friend of mine was doing, so I decided to help him so that I couldn't stay idle, you know. Because uh, in, in the environment that I was the, the people I was surrounded with in, in the same environment, they were, you know, everyone was so negative, you know. No one, no one could, could think that, you know, we can do something better. We can have a creative way to, to make money, or we can use arts to make money, you know. Everyone was thinking about, if, if not stealing, it's frauding. If it's not frauding, Everything was negative about the environment and the people around you. So, so you just had to do something to your keep yourself busy. Were shattered, you yeah, yeah. Did I didn't. Even, I didn't even think I was, go I was. I was. I was gonna go back to school. I didn't even think I, I was gonna come out of the. You know, the place. For me, I just thought of waking up one day and just getting employed as a casual laborer somewhere, and that was it for me. Mm. And where did you get the turn around now? Okay, one day, in the food, uh, in the food vending business, this friend of mine. Um, whether he was my buddy, my boss on buddy, this home used to pay me 50 shillings in a day. And I could go to job from 8 to 8. 50 bob? 50 shillings. Okay. Yeah. So one day I sat down and I said, you know what, uh, this guy has been, I've, I've been working for this guy for like, like for six months and this guy's not appreciating me much. So I decided, and, uh, I decided not to go there again. So I called it quits and I stayed in the house. So I stayed for, for the first week and for the second week. Then with a couple of friends of mine, my neighbors and a, a, a couple of friends, we saw an opportunity to start a car wash. So we, we started a car wash. From the car wash one day, my mom had um, heard about this scholarship and she told me to apply uh, with Strathmore University. Mm -hmm. They were having a program to help uh, needy, needy, needy students or needy kids from, you know, from the slums. Mm -hmm. So I applied and that's when they, they took me and they, they schooled me for two years. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, and, uh, and that's when I, I, I just don't know, that's when I think I had my light moment, my bulb moment, because that's when I began thinking, I began seeing the world uh, the way it was. 
I began seeing, you know, seeing myself somewhere after mm -hmm. some years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. From hopeless situation now to man, everything someone just turned around. I mean, when you, have you know, to it was like you know, it was like God. God had just remembered me. <laughs> you know, it was like God had answered the prayers. Wow. Yeah. From you know nothing. everything just, just yeah. You see, even my friends right now, some of them are still car. You know, they still wash oh. cars. Some of them are doing the main jobs. Mm -hmm. You see, the, today if they see me, they're like, you know, man, you 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 are our source of inspiration. We see, you, we get inspired. Yeah. Wow. You're so glad about I know you are inspiring someone maybe from the slum and they are watching and then this person is a brand manager and from the slum, yeah. Django, Kuzama D V D, all that and all this where you are right now. We bless the Lord. You're such an inspiration, I know, to many who are watching right now. Thank you so much. And um one thing I'd like to tell anyone out there is that um, everyone has a seed of greatness. And the, the earlier you, you discover your seed, the earlier you can nurture it and the earlier you can make sure, you know, it takes you to levels. You, you see, your gift is your lift. Don't, don't, don't choose to, to listen to what, you know, people around you are telling you. If they're telling you anything negative, just shut it. Mm -hmm. Just shut it and focus. One day, things will just turn up. Mm -hmm. Things will just turn up. Wow, thank you very much for coming and inspiring a soul outside there. I'm for so those people who are in a hopeless situation and don't know if there's a future tomorrow, you're wondering now, where is this taking me? There's a person here who is a testimony and is now a brand manager, marketing and doing some big projects in Kenya and outside Kenya. We are so grateful to have you, Robert. So Asante too. Sana. Thank you. Oh, before I forget, there's a company called Urban Touch Events. If you have your events, we sort your needs. Please just check us on all your social media uh, platforms. We can hook you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And remember, don't worry about the failures. Worry about the chances you miss when you don't even try. So keep on trying. There's some bright hope coming up for you. And remember, if you love this interview, you can find it on our YouTube channel. Don't go too far because we have more lined up for you.